Okay, everyone, I am recording this. If you pop on live, I will be sharing lots of information. And then if you are watching the replay, you'll get to see all of this in just a little bit. So I wanted to come on today and do a little bit more. I know with the beginning of the challenge, I was doing the Facebook lives each day, but I wanted to provide you guys with a little bit more content and something tangible that you can take kind of from this free challenge and put forward in your business, whether or not you decide to invest in any future education with She Learns video or with me. Um, I wanted you to have something kind of tangible you could take away. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to go over to the slides and you guys can follow along from there. If you do pop in live and you have any questions, or if you have any questions afterwards, you can email me um, or throw them in the chat on Facebook. I'm going to reference over there as well, just in case anybody has any questions that pop up. So let's get over to the slides. Okay. All right, friends. Well, um, thank you guys again for joining me. I am going through kind of a roadmap on adding video to your photography business. So we will start first and foremost here with just an intro. Nice to meet you guys. If anyone has been um, here for a while, you obviously know who I am. I'm Kelly White. I am a Indianapolis-based photographer and filmmaker. And if you're brand new, um, I shoot a lot of photos and films for brands here in the Indianapolis area. And then I also serve families as well. Additionally, I am an educator and have really put together this platform, She Learns Video, because it's something that I was looking for when I first got started. Started with shooting video. I felt like there weren't a lot of other female videographers educating in the space and just wanted something that was approachable and fun and easy to learn. Um, when I was going through this journey on my own, I was piecing together a lot of YouTube content and podcasts primarily from other male videographers who um, sometimes just made things a little bit more complicated than I feel like they needed to be. So once I got into the space, I decided, you know what, I really want to encourage other women to get into this space you know, kind of beyond photography where you have so much opportunity. I think there's a lot of room for growth and it really gives you a chance to diversify your income. We're going to get into all that in a minute, but these are kind of the elements I have. I have photos and films on the Kelly White. Um, you guys are getting a new sneak peek at my branding as well. That's actually coming out next week. Um, and then She Learns Video. I have a YouTube channel. It's She Learns Video on YouTube and then a podcast that's launching next week. So come follow along and um, engage. And I'm so excited that you're here. Okay, so if you were a challenger this week, if you went through the process, we had a group of about 20 people who were getting the emails every week. A lot of people were engaging on Facebook, but these are some of the things that we covered. So we talked about creating a mindset for video. So something that I feel like we need to do first and foremost is kind of shift our mental space from just shooting photos to having another focus on video. And I encourage you to do this because I think it just empowers you and gives you the opportunity to say, you know what? I am a videographer. I am adding this to my business. I am creating films for my clients. And a lot of times I think just saying these things out loud, give you the permission to do this. So I want you to start out with getting your mind in the right space. And, you know, even if you're brand new to this, I think that by telling yourself you're going to do this and you can do this, even writing it down. I know they say a lot of times that is a way to really, um, have accountability for your goals. And I agree with that. And then saying it out loud, I think is always important and telling other people. I know in the beginning, telling people I was a photographer when I first started my business was a little bit intimidating. So I think you may have a similar experience with video, but push past it, keep going. I promise it'll get easier over time. We also brainstormed some business ideas. So finding ways that you feel like video can really fit your business. And I talked about how every single business is unique and there's so many different ways that we can integrate video into what we do. It doesn't have to be, you know, short form all the time. If you're not huge on social media, you don't really enjoy sharing over there. That's totally fine. If you want to provide client films, that can be your focus. If you do enjoy the short form side, I think there's a lot of opportunity for growth over there. So it really gives you the permission to 
do, what you see in your business and how video can fit in well for you. Then we gathered the gear. So we talked about getting gear that is um, gear you already have. A lot of these things, if you're a photographer, you have sitting in your bag. And there are a couple of items that I mentioned that if you haven't seen all the challenge emails or the lives from the week, definitely go back and check those out. I'm going to send some resources out at the end of this. So if um, you want to follow back up and kind of go through what we learned, you can do that, but gear you already have start there and then invest, you know, as you continue to grow in the video space. I talked about a microphone being a possible add-on early on if you plan on capturing audio and a stretchy camera strap. That's something that if you don't already have, it really gives you the ability to stabilize your camera a little bit better. Um, from there, we shifted our settings. I talked about the different settings that we utilize. I have lots of resources on this as well. If you want to dip your toe into shooting video, you're going to have to shift those settings over, many of which we learned are very, very similar to what you're already doing with photo. So that makes it easy. You already know exposure and white balance, and it's just a matter of switching a couple of settings so you can get started with video. And then the last challenge yesterday, we talked about exploring potential clients. So finding and identify, I asked you to identify kind of one client you can reach out to someone that you can um, maybe have a, a good relationship with or a familiar client where you feel comfortable enough to try something new out and kind of give yourself that permission to get creative with their next session. Okay. So what can video do for you? I think this is so much of why I started She Learns Video because I feel that video gives you the opportunity to do so many things. I'm going to um, just check over in the chat here and make sure we don't have any questions so far and make sure no one's trying to get in the Zoom room. Okay, everything looks good. All right, I'm gonna add this chat right over here. Okay, what can video do for you? It can grow and diversify your income. So from the video side of things, I think it's going to give you the opportunity to really build upon whatever you've established for photography. I know for me personally, when I was starting out with photography, I was a little overwhelmed by how many other people were out there in the industry. And I was looking for a way to make more income in my business. I needed this income. I needed my business to be successful in order to stay a business owner. Otherwise I was going to have to go get a traditional job and go back to work as I had in the past. But this was something I really wanted to make work. And part of why it worked was because I decided to learn and grow with video. So it gives you the opportunity. I know for me, my first year with video, I doubled my income. And then since then, I have um, kind of quadrupled the revenue that's coming into my business. So, so much opportunity is out there for video. And I want that for you as well. You can serve your clients in a new way. We talked about this all week long. If you were in the challenge, you can um, essentially provide them with the opportunity to um, to get a new service from you. So you're already giving them photos. Why not give them the opportunity to add video onto their session? So many people already want this. And instead of them having to go out and find a videographer, they can come to you. I oftentimes have people, especially for brands that will come to me and say, hey, so-and-so referred you to me because they only offer photo and I want photo and video. Or so-and-so told me that you would be great for video because they don't offer it with their business. So I know that there's opportunity out there because I am taking clients that have been referred to me by other people who just don't want to add video onto their business. And I encourage you, if you've you know had some pushback on the video side before, I really encourage you to dive in and do it because you shouldn't be having to um, you know send these clients away. You should be getting that income for yourself and your business. You'll improve your photography skills. So this was one that I don't think I initially realized, but it will make you a better photographer by adding video to your business. And here's what I mean. So when you learn how to shoot for video, you really are getting everything perfect in camera. You have to have things looking pretty sharp in camera because you have a little less flexibility on the editing side with video that you do with photo. So for example, I kind of liken it to shooting a JPEG. You don't have as much flexibility with your white balance in 
video as you do with photo. So you're going to improve these skills. You're going to get better at making sure that, you know, things are tack sharp and your white balance is on point, your exposure is on point. And it's made me a better photographer in that way. When I go to just shooting photos, I know that the majority of my images are going to be usable. They're going to have the proper white balance right away. And they're not going to take as much editing as maybe they did before I started shooting video. So I like to think this is a bonus to add video onto your business. You'll build your brand and visibility. If you put yourself out there more with video, especially on the social side, you are going to build up a more recognizable brand. People are going to know who you are. I talked a little bit this week about putting yourself on camera. I know it can be uncomfortable in the beginning, but utilizing video with your business and showing your face to your potential customers is just going to help build that connection and give them more opportunity to, you know, whenever they're thinking, hey, I need a videographer or hey, I need a photographer, they're immediately thinking thinking of you because they've seen you show up for yourself and for your brand and your business. And again, setting yourself apart from the competition. I mentioned this earlier, but early on when I moved to Indiana, I had just started my business and there were so many talented photographers in the area. And I was like, you know, what's going to make me different? What's going to set me apart? And video has really, really been that thing for me and can certainly be that for you. So don't get left behind. I feel like more and more people are starting to dive into the video space. So I don't want you to get left behind. I know there's a lot of opportunity out there. And even if it's something that you decide, we talked a little bit in the challenge about taking one step at a time, even if you want to start out and say, okay, I'm just going to start shooting some clips for social at my sessions. And then eventually you slowly roll that into adding, you know, social clips that you share with clients or that they can upgrade their packages. I talked to Maddie in the chat yesterday over in the Facebook group and talked about how it's such a perfect add-on for brands. It's such a no-brainer for them to upgrade. So if you're shooting brands, this is something that you should definitely be doing and definitely be learning because it is something that every brand I talk to is like, yep, we want to add video on. So I know there's opportunity out there and I'm excited to see what you guys can create. Okay, so I wanted this webinar, essentially, um, this live training that we're doing here on the last day to provide you with something valuable and tangible that you can take with you. So this is the roadmap that we're going to be talking about. And these are 10 steps, essentially, that you should utilize if you are thinking of adding video to your photography business. And some of these, we are going to go into a little bit of detail. Others we covered in the challenge. So if you were in the challenge, you saw some of those details in those emails. If you weren't in the challenge, um, I will be sending out an email with full recap of that. So you can check that out as well. Okay, step one. So gear and settings. This is kind of where you should start. You should really get a good handle on the gear that you need for video and the settings that you're going to be utilizing. And we talked a little bit about how the gear is basically what you already have. There might be one or two things that you need to add on, or maybe you need to upgrade the type of SD cards you're shooting with. You might want to pop a microphone on top of your camera um, or add a monopod or a stretchy camera strap. Practice, practice. We're, I'm getting ahead of myself, but practice switching between photo and video. So you want to make sure that you're feeling comfortable with that process. And for me, that was just a lot of like taking photos of my daughter and then switching over to video, taking some video clips, doing it with, you know, my dog or anybody you can get to be in front of your camera, practice switching back and forth. And then investing wisely and slowly. This is something that I think I differentiate myself with other videographer educators. A lot of times people will be like, okay, here's the gear bundle that you need if you're going into video. And for me, that was very overwhelming. Like I didn't have a ton of money when I was first starting out my business. And I just have taken the approach of buying thing buying things for my business as I'm going to need them and not investing too much upfront because sometimes, you know, it's like a light I've, we've all done it before where you've bought, you know, the new lens or the new light and then realized I don't actually utilize that for what I need. So make sure you take your time when you are buying new gear and practice getting a good handle on the gear and settings. Next up, practice. So as I said before, um, not just switching back and forth on your settings, but practice shooting, practice camera movement. It's going to take some time until you feel really confident and comfortable. But 
as I said in the challenge, just make sure that we are trying to focus on that next best step and make a little bit of progress each day. Even if that's grabbing your iPhone, you know, shooting some clips of your kids at the park, practicing some camera movements with um, your big camera when you have it out at your next session, practice on your kids, practice on any family members, nature. You know, we had a girl in the chat who dropped, um, I'm not sure, I think it was maybe Melissa who dropped a clip of sunflowers and they were beautiful. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity to practice. You could do something like make that into a sunflower minis promotion or, you know, add it to your website when you are showing off some behind the scenes from your next family session, or you could add it to a blog. There's just lots of opportunity every time you have these little video clips and then watch your footage back. So when you are practicing, you know, go back and watch the footage and think, oh, you know, maybe that was a little shaky. I should try and hold my camera a little tighter with the camera strap or, um, you know, my white balance looked a little bit off there. I'll adjust it. So the more and more you do this and you watch the footage back, the more you're going to learn. Then select and learn editing. So this is a process that's a little more in depth. We didn't cover it in the challenge just because that's a lot to take on in a week. However, in the uh, video jumpstart course that is actually launching right now, there's a whole module on editing and I have editing walkthrough videos where I show you exactly how I edit in iMovie and Premiere Pro. If you are just getting started, I really encourage you to check out iMovie and some other programs are DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Rush iMovie is free if you have a Mac and then DaVinci Resolve is free as well. As far as I know, I believe there's like a free version and maybe a paid version. And then Premiere Rush, it is a paid program, but if you have the Adobe um, Creative Cloud, it's included in that. So um, someone like me, I'm already, I think, paying 50 bucks a month to Adobe. It's included in that. I can utilize it. Um, so you may already have that as well, especially if you are doing Lightroom and Photoshop and maybe another you know, design app you may or may not have access to that already. So check it out. And then the next level, I would say, if you get started with video editing and you think, I really want to do this, this is something I'm going to do long-term, I would look into Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. Um, it just says Final Cut there, but it's essentially Apple's version of like pro version of iMovie. So it's that next step up. I've worked with both I've actually worked with iMovie, Premiere Rush, Premiere Pro, and Final Cut. I haven't done a lot with DaVinci Resolve, but everyone I've talked to really enjoys it. And again, it's a free program. So if you're just starting out, maybe something that you want to check out. And from there, it's going to take a little bit of time, but the more and more you edit the footage, as I said before, watching it back, the more you edit, the better you're going to get. And you're going to get better fast because when you're editing your films, it doesn't take long and you are starting to see what you would do differently and how you would improve. Kind of similar to looking at your photos and going through the process of editing those when you're just starting out with photo model calls. So once you have a little bit of practice with your camera, a little bit of practice editing, I encourage you to do a model call, start putting those skills to work, you know, ask friends and family, previous clients, clients you're comfortable with, see if you can shoot some video clips at their session. In the beginning, I would say you should do a little bit of this work for free, you know, make it an add on, make it something that's fun and creative and playful, but don't do this for free too long. I think a lot of people run into that where they're like, oh, I'm just going to add it on for free, add this on for free. And your time is so valuable. And I will say that video does take a little more time than photo. You will get faster with anything, the more and more you do this, but I want you to make sure you're valuing your time and you're knowing how worthwhile your time and um, skills are when you're going through this process. Next up, build a portfolio. So take those model calls or any personal films that you make, really create a portfolio that you can put on YouTube or Vimeo. Um, you can host it on your website and you can share all of this content on social. And in the beginning, I would encourage you to maybe diversify what you're shooting. So if you are a wedding photographer and you shoot families, maybe do some behind the scenes at a wedding and then also do some behind the scenes at a family session. Or if you shoot brands, if you are a photographer who shoots a lot of different things, I encourage you to use video in a lot of different ways as well. Once you find kind of what you really like, then you might be looking to kind of niche down and decide that this is where I'm going to focus. That's exactly what I did. So I started out doing films for 
anybody that would take them. I did some wedding films. I still occasionally will do wedding films, but really now have um, gotten into the brand space. I feel like that's a perfect space for me in the sense that people are willing to pay for brand video. It's something that they really want to invest in. And it works out really well with my family, my timeline, and it gives me the opportunity to work with other female entrepreneurs, which I've you can probably tell by She Learns video, I really, really enjoy that and um, love making it part of my business. So after you have the portfolio built up, I want you to create your offer. So consider what you're going to sell and consider who you're going to sell it to. So this might be short form clips that you're adding on to sessions as an upgrade. You might want to say, I'm going to do video exclusively at sessions and offer video only sessions. You can make it an add on something where a lot of family films that I've done in the past, I'll have them add on a family film to their photo package that they're already shooting or that I'm already shooting for them. And then um, niche. So I know this is kind of opposite of what I said in diversify, but just to go back to my story, my personal story is um, in the beginning, I want you to kind of shoot everything you can to get that experience. And then once you feel comfortable enough to start offering this in your business, focus on what you want. Don't, you know, don't do this just to make money. Do this because it's something you're passionate about and it is something that you feel like people are really going to value and you're going to enjoy the process of creating. Okay, share, share, share share anywhere you can. I'm telling you in the beginning, especially um, if you are new to video, if this isn't something you've been sharing a lot in the past, share it as much as you can. I even last year, so I've been doing this for like six years now. And I had someone last year say, oh, I didn't even know you offered video. So you can't post this in enough places. People don't see everything. You know, it's one of those things where you think, oh, I've posted it everywhere. You know, I've put it on YouTube and Vimeo. It's on my website. And I put it on social media a couple of times. That's not enough. You need to continue to talk about this. You need to continue to tell people, put it in your email marketing, word of mouth, tell friends, tell family. I also shoot video. I'm adding video onto my business. You know, you are your own biggest um, fan and the promoter of your business, especially if you're a solopreneur. Educate your audience. So you may have to sell this a little bit. It might be something that they don't know that they need. They don't know that they're going to want it. And I think with this, the best example is families. Like families don't realize how valuable that video is of their little tiny kids' voices until they've, you know, got teenagers walking out the door. It's something that will continue to grow in value for families, for weddings and brands. You know, once they have it, I have so many clients who I've sent them a few videos and they have posted it everywhere. Like they've repurposed it into reels. They've put it on their website. It's in their email marketing. This is something that is going to be really valuable to them. And you have to explain, you know, how there's going to be other people who come to you and say, we want video. They don't need to be sold on it. But in the beginning, you may have to sell this a little bit, encourage people to try video. And again, overshare, you cannot share this enough, especially in in the beginning. And then step nine, continue to invest. So continue to invest in education, improve your skills, no matter what you're doing in your business. I encourage you to find education that serves you in different spaces and really pushes you to get creative and to grow your business and the knowledge surrounding it, the gear. So as I said, in the beginning, don't invest too early, but once you feel confident, start investing in gear that you know is going to pay off for you. Ask me, I'm happy to answer any questions that I can about gear. And if I don't know the answer, I will help you find the right answer on what gear is going to work really, really well for your needs. And then time. So continue to invest time. I know we all have limited amounts of time, but you have to put some time into this in order to make it work. Just like learning any new skill that we have out there, we have to invest a little bit of our time for it to pay off big dividends and think creatively. So consider new ways to try video, you know, use video for your business and for your clients and don't be afraid to fail. These are things that are so important. I think we see what other people are doing. You know, the internet's one of those places that nothing is original these days, but I like that you have a new layer of creativity with video. You can sit back and think, you know, how should this look in my business? How will this serve me? How will this serve my clients? And I want you to get creative, you know, think outside the box, email me and say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing 
some wild idea. And I will be so excited to hear it. At some point, I really want to make a documentary. So I'm thinking of all kinds of creative things I can do with video. And I want you to do the same. Okay, so I actually have a download for this roadmap that kind of goes through the 10 steps that I talked about. So I promised if you came to this webinar or you watched the replay, you won't leave empty handed. And then from here, I want to tell you guys a little bit more about um, video and kind of what I offer as a business owner with She Learns Video. So why don't more photographers offer video? I think for a lot of people and what I've heard from them is they don't have the time to learn. They feel like they don't have the time, which, you know, we don't have the time to do anything these days. So I totally understand that. I have two little kids at home. I, you know, I barely had time to do these lives this week, but you have to make the time when you're learning something new. They don't yet have the skills or gear. As I told you in the beginning, I don't really feel like that's an excuse because you probably do already have the skills if you're a photographer and most of the gear you need, you already have that as well. Fear of overwhelm. This is why I started She Learns Video because I think video can be really overwhelming and I want to make it more approachable and fun. It does seem a little bit intimidating at first, but I promise the more you do it, if I can do it and I can integrate it into my business like I have and have had success with it. I promise and assure you that you can as well. So what if I told you it could be straightforward, approachable, fairly easy, fairly fast, and like an extension of your current skills. So, so many of the skills you already have are just going to be, you know, shifted a little bit into video. Easy and fast, it's kind of what you make it. I think that it's as easy as I can make it with the video jumpstart that I have to offer here. And fast, it all is relative. One of my dear friends, she invested in the video jumpstart course. And within a few months, she was charging for video. And now it's a huge part of her business. And she's having so much success. So I promise if you sit down, spend a little bit of time. I mean, right now we're beginning of August, if you took the time this month to go through this course and learn and practice some of these things by the end of, by the fall busy season, you could be charging people for video. I stand by that. I a hundred percent believe that if you put the time in, you put the work in, you could be doing this. The biggest mistake, truth be told, the biggest mistake I see people make with video is that they don't have a guide and a game plan. They don't have that next step they're taking. They're just kind of winging it. And they're like, okay, I need to be in 24 frames per second. You know, I'll do that. Then, oh, let me try to figure out maybe an editing program. I don't know what to use. They don't have someone that's kind of in their corner and leading them from this step to that step to that step. And that that's what I wish I had. And that's what I've created here. So the video jumpstart is my signature course. It is easy to follow, fairly quick to consume. It's yours to keep. It's online. I've had people who started in the very beginning and I've added some content to it. I definitely add bonuses here and there, whether it's um, additional access to my knowledge or bonus calls. I'm actually getting ready to add a new module on short form video. So you will get that when it's added. Five modules, we go through gear and settings, audio and music, which we didn't fully touch on in the challenge, um, just a little bit on audio with microphones, but I go into adding music to your films, shooting and story, which is such an important part when you are putting together films for clients, editing, a full module on editing, and then business and kind of beyond where I see this going for you. And again, giving you creative ideas that you can then take and make them into your own. And additionally, we're going to have a short form video module coming very, very soon. I've been working on it behind the scenes and I'm so excited to share it. And then it has lots of, I mean, here, 17 videos, 12 PDFs, the bonus content, watch me edit videos. I actually shoot a session. You can see me shoot that with um, one of my friends and a few of our little girls. So you're seeing some of the behind the scenes of how I work at a session, different camera movements I'm using. And then you see the film that I put together and you see how I edit it. Voxer access. So, I mean, I am in your pocket. If you say, if you're at a session and you're like, Kelly, you know, I don't know what frame rate I should be using, or I'm having a difficult time with this light. Just send me a Voxer message and I will help you out. I'll help you out with settings. I'll help you out with creativity, with business. Happy to chat any of it. And then a personalized film review. So this is um, 
you know, your film review, you send me a film once you're completed with it. It could be your first film you make. It could be the next film that you make. And I will go through, give you some feedback on what, you know, I think you're doing really great at this. And then here's a couple of things you might continue to work on. It's such a valuable resource. You know, as photographers all the time, we're thinking, oh, let's have a portfolio review. Let me have somebody look at my images. And I want you to do the same with video. So what are people saying? Here's a few reviews from past clients. You know, this course walks you through literally everything you need to add video to your business. The modules were designed to kind of fit within my schedule. Again, hopefully that's helpful. I know a lot of us are moms with busy schedules, and I promise this is for you. The lessons are easy to understand and, you know, stealing knowledge from the pros. I love this because it's like, I'm, I'm giving you everything I have. This is, I'm not holding back. There's no gatekeeping here. I want you to be successful. Like I have been, and I know that this course is, is what will lead you there. All right. Video jumpstart is just when I needed to get started, takes you through everything you'll need to add video to your business. And I can't wait to use it. So this has just been so fun to see a lot of these attendees utilizing video either in their sessions, in short form for their families. They've all gotten really creative. And then Lisa, she has such nice things to say. She, I share my knowledge freely and I'm hoping to empower you to learn video right away. All right. So go get started. Um, I do have a webinar code. So if you came and you watched all the way to the end, there is a code for $50 off through Sunday. And I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that even if you decide not to invest in the video jumpstart right now, that you take this roadmap and utilize it for your business. I will say, I don't know when I'm going to be opening the video jumpstart again. I know educators say that all the time, but truth be told, I am looking at creating some additional resources for video is kind of that next level. So I think if you're new to video, now's the time to get in. Now's the time to really learn this content and then grow within the She Learns video community. Okay. So I'll send out an email with all of these resources. I have additional resources over at shelearnsvideo.com podcast and new website are launching next week. So if you are watching this um, on the day that it comes out or over the weekend, definitely go give me some love and follow along next week when all that comes out. And then if you need to reach me, you can reach out via email or find me over on Instagram. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming. And I am so excited. I really want to see a lot of you who did the challenge inside the video jumpstart.